this chapter, I'm going to show you how to fit a standard blade type arrow rest. Now, for the moment, we're going to set it all up straight and by eye. So firstly, we need to remove the fixing bolt for the blade, which has also got a washer on it. You can then fit the blade in place and put the bolt back in. Using your Allen keys, you can then tighten that blade in place and then it's ready to attach to the bow. So when we're fitting the rest to the bow, we're going to put the bolt through the slot and screw it down into the thread on the bow. Take your Allen keys and just nip the bolt up to begin with so that we can make sure we've got it in the right slot. You need to ensure that the rest is sitting parallel with the shelf on the riser. Once you're happy with that, you're then ready to tighten the bolt down. Keep, make sure you keep hold of the riser and the rest when you're doing this. Once you're happy with that, take your Allen keys and tighten down the fixing screw on the rest. The rest is now secure to the bow and we're ready to make some adjustments as to where it is. I'm now going to set the blade height on the bow. Now the tip of the blade needs to run through the centre of the button hole here. The blade height currently is lower than centre so we need to adjust the blade upwards so that it runs through the centre of the hole. So I'm now going to loosen the adjustment off by undoing this bolt. I'm then going to raise the blade up by screwing this bolt clockwise. Once I feel I've raised it enough, I'm going to tighten the bolt back up again to secure it in place. We just need to check that the blade runs through the center of the buttonholes. Yeah, it does. Perfect. So now that we've got the vertical height set correctly on the blade, we need to get the horizontal adjustment correct on it. To do that, we're going to fit an arrow into the bow. We're then going to look at it from behind and line the string up down the center of the riser. At the moment, we can see that the arrow is pointing off left, therefore it's not set up correctly. So I need to move the blade in further, closer towards the riser. To do this, I'm going to undo the locking bolt and I'm then going to screw this bolt in clockwise, which will bring the blade closer to the riser. Once I've got that to where it needs to be, I'm going to lock it back up again on that screw and I'm going to put the arrow back in to check it looks correct. The arrow now sits perfectly behind the string which runs down the center of the riser. So now we've got our rest set up perfectly. All we need to do is tighten all the bolts up again and we're ready to go. A common alternative to the blade type rest that Liam's just shown you how to fit is a drop away arrow rest. I'm going to show you in this chapter how to fit a drop away arrow rest to this bow. The first thing I will do is bolt it to the bow, which is a nice simple operation. Just making sure that the arrow rest is nice and level as I tighten it up. Once fitted to the bow, it's nice and secure. I'm then going to sort out the left-right adjustment and get it in a roughly the 
sensible location as a starting point. Now to do this, I attach a long rod and simply put an arrow on the arrow rest, like so, sitting on the rest, and I adjust it looking down the back so it sits straight down the middle of the long rod. That's a good starting point. It's a little bit off to the right, so I need to adjust it. Here, just taking an Allen key, I'm going to loosen off the left-right adjustment. Slide it out a little bit. Okay, and it's easiest at this point. Now I've got it loose, just to check it while it's loose. There we go. And tighten it up. That's tight. And now I just check looking down the long rod. Check that it's down the middle. Yep, that's fine. And now, either with or without the arrow, we check up and the down. And what I'm checking here is I'm checking the height of the arrow rest, in re not in relation to your knocking point at the moment, in relation to the button hole. And I want it to be sitting so the top of the arrow rest lines up with the bottom of the arrow hole. So basically my arrow is sitting somewhere near the centre uh, of, of your button hole. And I can check that with an arrow. And that's setting how high the arrow rest pulls up. And that looks fairly reasonable. So I'll leave that there. And the other thing to check is there's two settings on the up and the down. There's how far we set the locked position with the arrow rest up. And then we have a setting on how far we let the arrow rest drop down. I like the arrow rest to drop as far as possible without touching the shelf. So I want to make sure it's not touching the shelf which here it is, it's actually dropping down and touching the shelf, so I need to adjust, adjust that, which is done with this adjustment here. The other adjustment for the up and the down is on the side here, so there's two different adjustments. So I'll just loosen that one off. There we go, and adjust that. That's the top. And just adjust that. Okay, so I can see a little bit of daylight, there's about a millimetre under there now, that's perfect. Once we have the rest here in a roughly sensible location, I'm then at a point where I'm ready to tie the pull-up part of the arrow rest. Now, most manufacturers produce springy type pull-up systems, which can be used as a pull-up system, or you can just simply replace them with a piece of rigid material like D-loop material. I'm going to show you the D-loop option, as that's my preferred method. There are two ways to tie a drop-away arrow rest. You can either tie it so it pulls this lever back by pulling with the, tying it to the downward cable, or you can tie it to pull this lever back by tying it to the cable slide, because as you draw the bow back, the cable slide moves backwards, so you have some length to pull back. I'm going to show you how to tie it to the cable slide. In order to do that on this particular bow, I'm using a standard cable slide that comes with the bow, and I've modified this one just by drilling a hole in it. Some arrow slides, cable slides that you can buy, are manufactured, ready to tie straight to a drop away arrow rest, and the hole is already pre-drilled in them. You can use either alternative, it doesn't matter. So here I'm just going to switch over the cable slide to my pre-drilled one, which is a nice simple operation. And now I have my pre-drilled slider in place and I'm ready to attach the pull-up cable that's going to eventually pull the arrow rest up. The first thing we need to do to prepare that pull-up cable is to take an ordinary length of D-loop material. Here I've taken one that's about eight, nine inches long, longer than we need, but it's easier to prepare a longer length and then cut it down. I'm going to prepare a flat on the end of this piece of D-loop with just simple lighter, prepare a, a hot molten blob and then put it on a cold piece of metal to create that flat. I 
I'll just wait for it to cool down. Now I have a nice simple flat. On the other end, I'll just create a nice sharp end to pull it through the hole. There we go. And now I'm simply going to attach this pull-up cable to my drop-away rest by sliding it down through the hole until it stops on the flat and then simply sliding it through. There we go, and attach it. At this stage, we don't know how long that cable needs to be. And this is a little bit of trial and error, so I'm just going to lock it down there. And the way that I check to see whether that cable length is long enough is simply by drawing the bow back with my fingers. There I've pulled it back and you can clearly see its cable's too long and it's not pulling up the arrow rest at all. So just by adjusting and pulling that length of cable through. There we go. Try somewhere around there, that's quite a lot of cable pulled through there. Pull up again. There you can see it's just starting but it's still too long. And you can go through this process with trial and error until it pulls up nice and tight. I'll just adjust it again. There we go. That's basically the rest in place. I don't need all this material so I can just cut that off and finish it with a lighter, which I'll do against this table here. There we go. And now I'll just finish it with a lighter. And we're done.